So I'm going to, for the start of this, I'm just going to introduce the show and myself, and then I'll turn it over for, to you for an introduction, and then we'll just like get going with questions, talk for like 30 minutes or so, and then that'll be it. So. Okay, and do you um, feel like... Sorry, I just woke up. I looked at my phone like two minutes ago and it was like, That's hey, okay. remember that call you have? And I was like, <laughs> what? Because I'm still not used to people being up this early. Um, <laughs> what was my question? Oh, it, do you need me to adjust my audio in any way? Um, no, I, I think you sound good. Um, okay. I'm pretty used to... I've gotten pretty used to the whole like virtual meeting thing and recording all of this stuff, so I think all okay. the settings are good. But yeah, good. so yeah, if you want like a minute or anything, if you just woke up. Ah um, no, whatever. I talk about me all the time. Okay, well, cool. Um, all right, well, cool. I just need to like shift into radio host yeah. mode, sure. <laughs> and we will get going. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Mm. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and all my NB friends. You are tuned to Sacred Voices on KGNU. My name is Aston. I serve on the board of directors for Sacred Voices. Sacred Voices is a nonprofit organization focused on teaching poetry and spoken word to the black, brown, and indigenous youth in the Denver, Colorado area. Today, I am joined by Asetu Shango who was the feature at our most recent open mic. Uh, say to how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Um, so we do an open mic every month on the fourth Friday of every month. And because of COVID, these have been virtual open mics. Uh, you got to experience that for yourself. How was the experience of doing a virtual show? I know it's kind of weird. <sighs> Yeah, it is kind of weird. I think what I did like about it is you're in your room, right? You're in your house. You're in this very intimate space with a camera that's very close to your face, which is not normally how people see me perform. And so it did give me the ability to just be like, you know what? Scratch all of the like performance poems. Let's like get to how I'm actually feeling and what's moving in my life right now and, and read more poems that were intimate. Um, so that part I like. The tough part is I could only see one person's face and reactions the whole time. So I had no idea how I was doing or how it was being received. And then there's no applause. And I need applause you know what i mean <laughs> like i am a fragile egoed artist and i need constant affirmation so that part's a little weird yeah it's uh it's definitely different um because even even before because we we used to do these like hybrid shows where we would like have people at a venue but the whole audience would be virtual Mm -hmm. And I could just see the performers like right when they finished and they look out and it's just an empty room mm -hmm. and, it's, and you just see that like wash over them. What's like, did I do it? <laughs> Was it good? I don't. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly how it feels. Um, but yeah, you, you did great. Um, if people Thanks. are interested in seeing that performance, you can go on our uh, Facebook page or our YouTube channel and see the, uh, the recording of that show. But I, I also noticed um, just during your performance, it kind of you kind of like blurred the line a little bit between like performance and like analysis of your poems and just like talking about your life and stuff. And that was a uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing that played into it. But do you, do you normally like talk so much about like the story behind the poems and all that sort of thing? Yeah, I don't think as much as I did like I think there's always like a little I like to let people into my world but my the entire point of being an artist for me is to like be real and be authentic 
Um, but because there is no aud- audience feedback, it's just me rambling. So it ends up being maybe a little more than I had originally intended. Um, but my the point of that show for me was really like, I want I want to be real. Like I've been, we've all been quarantined for however many months and been with ourselves. There's no there's nothing else here but me and what I'm moving through. So I might as well do that. Yeah. And that, that brings up an, an interesting point because, you know, we're all going through the same thing. And I, I say we're all artists. We're not all artists, but pretty much everybody who I talk to and feature on this show and everything, we're all artists. So I always love to ask, like, how has developing your craft and the creative process how has that changed since COVID started? Ooh, great question. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, well, I think for me, it was, it's changed before then. So it really changed when I stopped competing in slam poetry. Because when you're in that environment, you're always you know, you can't get away from it. You're writing for the audience or you're writing for that poet who you think is better than you and like trying to get a poem that's better than them. So when I moved away from that, which was actually in 2017, so it's been a few years, um, I really just started writing for me and just writing what I needed to get out of my body. And then in these past few years, you know, with COVID, I think, um, I, then it came in even more because then it wasn't even like I was performing. It was, you know, which is such an outward thing. It's such a projection, right? You project your voice, you project your emotions. You're trying to get the entire audience to feel you. Whereas with COVID, you know, I'm literally like, all I have is my Instagram lives. <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> like, guys, like, listen to my poems, please. <laughs> um, so then it's, it's a very it's a much quieter, much more like contained, um, expression. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I, I definitely can relate to that. Um, I'm, I'm not a poet, I'm a musician and, mm. you know, just being trapped at home with an instrument or like I, I performed at one of these open mics a few months ago and I had that experience of looking out and there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it just kind of changes a lot of things there. Um, and you were talking in your performance during the show about how a lot of your poems lately had themes of uh, darkness in quarantine mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Do you think you could talk about that a little bit? Sure. I mean, that was, again, not necessarily quarantine related. Like the dark goddess, dark poet, like dark energy has always been moving through me it just really solidified during quarantine just and that was the thing right it's like been eight months of just me I don't have to adjust myself to anyone else and what they think and what they feel I should be and that has just allowed the energy that was already present in my body to to just fully express and fully expand and so the dark goddess energy as i like to call it is it's all of the things that we avoid right my the my favorite poem that i'm pretty sure i read that night um it's like it's the black it's the dark beneath the buried the haunted the hunted it's all the parts of god that you don't see as holy Right, because all of these things that we avoid in a hyper masculine, hyper happy culture um, is basically saying that's not God. This, you know, happy and sunshine and production and all of these things are God. But our rest and our and death and grief and anger, all of those aren't holy. All of those aren't God. So we try to suppress them, and that keeps us out of balance with ourselves. And that keep us keeps us out of balance with the natural energy and the flow of the universe. So my role in this world, as I'm discovering it, is to really help people move through the entirety of themselves, accept all of themselves. And part of that is a love affair with the darkness. That's um thank you for that. That's a very good, <laughs> thorough answer. I love to hear it. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, let me see. I'm trying to like, I want to shift gears now, but I'm just uh, ruminating on that mm-hmm. thought. Um, so this is something I wanted to point out at the beginning, but I just sort of forgot about it. Um, you're you're not in America right now. You, I am not in America. Yeah, you are in Scotland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and this is a this is we pre-record these interviews. So what time is it for you right now? Oh, it's ten a.m. That's not that's not bad. I made that, you stay up. <laughs> yeah, that's a you know ten a.m. is a really normal time for me. It's currently three a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I mean it's it's fine with me. I'm I'm totally awake, but I know some people are put off. You you were surprised when I picked the three a.m. time. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my day for like working usually doesn't start till four p.m. over here. So yeah. I was like, oh, I have something in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keeping keeping you on your toes a little bit there. Um, <laughs> And you've been traveling a lot, like uh, you you were in Ireland before, right? I was, yeah. What is a, um, what's the what's the purpose of this travel? What's the what's the itinerary? Great question. So there is none. Um, I, yeah, I'm very spirit led. I don't know if that's coming through, um, <laughs> but I. <laughs> Earlier this year, I think probably mm, August, what my best friend who lives in Spain was like, oh, our friend Claire, who's also a poet, is um, is in Ireland. And they said that anybody can join them because uh, they had a two-bedroom Airbnb. So I was like, Ireland? Hmm. Okay, I'm down. Um, and so I booked a <laughs> ticket knowing that it was during COVID, knowing that I might like get locked down there. And I was like, "Eh, I'm okay with that. So I went there thinking it was going to be a three week trip. And I think about a week in, they canceled my flight. And I was like, Hmm, okay, Uh. let's see what we can get out of this. (laughs) Cause I have always wanted to have a one way ticket, you know, like no return date, just kind of, see what happens um but i've never been able to because i've always had some performance or you know had to come back to the states to make money and now that everything is online it was like potentially the worst time but also the perfect time you know to (laughs) to do it so i looked and i was like thinking about coming back from ireland because it wasn't that i couldn't get a flight back it was just that i had to go through a different airline and maybe spend you know an overnight trip in london or something like that but um so i could have came back and i was thinking about coming back but then i looked and flights and flights to scotland were like 50 bucks i was like (laughs) forget it i'm out of here so the plan right now and it's always changing is you know i'm here in scotland I'm going to go down to England, maybe pop over to Wales because Josh was really excited about Wales for some reason. Yeah, our, um, our, our host for the open mic recommended Wales. <laughs> Made me want to go to Wales. <laughs> I was like, I've never heard that recommendation, but sure, why not? <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then I really want to go to Morocco, possibly if other countries around this area open up. I'd love to go there like Italy or France. Um, But if not, my friends in South Africa. So it's really, it's just kind of like flow of the universe, whatever happens. Um, This is my last stitch chance to like live this dream um, before, really before my partner and I like settle down and have children. So that's, that's where I'm at. Right. That's really cool. Have you, um, (laughs) Have you been like well traveled before or is a lot of this new? Yeah, I have traveled a lot. I've traveled at least one international trip a year since 2012. Oh, wow. Oh. So, I mean, this is still pretty cool, especially with, you know, the whole like the the whole notion of like, like you were saying, a one way trip, no real return date, just sort of like seeing what happens. It's like the the artist's journey. I'm sure you're getting a lot of inspiration for a lot of things right yes. now. Yes. <laughs> yes. And also just a lot of, you know, self-knowledge and healing. And I also considered, I'm like, is this irresponsible in a pandemic? And then I looked at the U S rates and I was like, it's irresponsible to go back. 
Uh, honestly, yes. <laughs> that's, that's very much the case. I would love to be in a different country right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And that, you know, that kind of brings up a larger point of like, what, what are some of the major differences that you've seen uh, being in uh, Europe in general in these different countries compared to the American experience? I know you've touched on, uh, on the poems you read, but um, for yeah. our radio audiences, could you touch on that? Yes. Yeah, so number one thing, the police do not carry guns. So that is an experience for my nervous system to know <laughs> that I'm not being actively hunted. Um, and then, you know, I don't I can't say like there's no racism here. Um, I'm sure that there is some racism here, <laughs> but because um, it's not so institutionalized and there's not this long history at least for black people, right? There's indigenous people here and there's all sorts of history about the Catholic church and stuff. Um, but for me as a black person, I'm, I'm not facing systemic oppression everywhere I go and everything I do. So that has just allowed my nervous system to kind of unfold um, all of the pain that I have experienced for the past 29 years of my life in the States, um, which has been a very healing and very heartbreaking experience because now I have a taste of what my existence should kind of feel like and knowing that all the folks back home are not, that, that, I, don't, I, that I don't even know how that would be possible, you know? But it, right. it also on the flip side is, is kind of imbuing me with a new with a second wind you know for social justice and yeah. equitability yeah i'm sure that must be conflicting you know to be presented with a reality that's uh better than before kind of like an idealized version of what things should be like it's almost like a, a sort of survivor's guilt or something in that sense um but yeah, uh, that's a you know very interesting concept that a lot of people don't get to experience. Um, yeah, and w is there anything else that you've noticed? Really, um, I know that we touched um, on a few things. Accessibility, like through public transport. You mm -hmm. know, I could travel the entire UK on a train that has Wi-Fi. <laughs> Their trains and buses all have Wi-Fi. I, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> kidding me? Like, yeah, it's kind of great. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, I mean, even when I, the last time I flew, which I don't, that was a while ago, just like, like they have Wi-Fi on the planes, but you have to like pay a ridiculous amount of money just to access it. And it's like, well, just the little things like that really right. can get to me. Yeah, like that. this obvious notion that money is more valuable than human life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. Um, and in terms of like COVID, um, because you were telling me that you're on a lockdown right now in Scotland mm -hmm. and comparing that to here, you know, we got nothing. Uh, the the mm -hmm. governor and his partner just came down with COVID. You know, things are mm -hmm. things seem grim. How would you how would you uh, characterize it over there? You know, I think that the major cities over here are doing similar things. I'll be honest about that. Um, because I was in Edinburgh and it was popping. Like <laughs> people <laughs> were on the streets, we were hanging out. Um, so I have, you know, it's it's that weird thing where it's like I have the luxury of not being from here and not having to stay in one place. So now I'm I'm up in the north. Mm. Um, so I'm in a very small town. There really isn't much, many things open here to begin with, but now there's definitely not a ton going on. So I can kind of like, I can maneuver my body in my home um, to be safer. But yeah, I think that like Ireland though, I would say for them, they went on a very strict lockdown about um, two weeks into me being there. And they meant that, and it mm. reflects in their numbers. And That's, I think Scotland's yeah. numbers have gone down as well. England is 
not doing too hot. Um, and you yeah. can just tell, like, based off of who is taking it serious, like, who's taking the lockdown seriously in particular, where the numbers have gone down. Yeah. And I, that, that goes back to that concept of, like, money over human life type thing. Exactly. Like exactly. Saving, saving the economy over the people. Exactly. Um, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's shift gears back to, uh, the poetry a little bit here um so i i I unfortunately don't have any samples of your work to play for um uh our listeners but give us um give us a little rundown of like what inspires you to write poetry what is it um that you you have a, a life experience let's say uh what is it about that experience that would make you more likely to write a poem about that as opposed to anything else hmm that's a great question. Uh, I think that my poetry is kind of autocryptography. So it's this critical lens of the culture in which I was conditioned and raised through my own experiences. So for instance, I have um, my future mother-in-law was very upset about the Me Too movement particularly in Hollywood, because she felt like those women benefited from this system in which, in my opinion, they were sexually exploited. But in her opinion, you know, they like got all, you know, did the sexual theories, got all this power, and now they're turning around and getting upset about it. Right. And that, woof, like that gives me all the feelings, all of them. And so <laughs> when I get that rush of like all of the feelings, like I can't even just pick one, all of them. Um, it, it tells me that this is not only am I angry at the culture, right? Not only am I angry at the out there, but there's some that it really touches something deeply within me and that there's something personal about the way that hits so knowing that I you know at a very young age was given the message that my body especially my sexuality didn't belong to me and belong to the men in my family either as a way of ownership to keep me protected from the other men out there who would want my sexual energy or as their own sexual energy right Mm. and so that's really how my poetry kind of operates is like I get that hit of emotions um, and it's it's usually something systemic and then it's like okay and and how can I tell why this isn't okay how can I tell you know how can I really bring light to this issue and the way that I tend to do that is by making it deeply personal and in doing so doing my deep healing work in my in my poetry and then eventually publicly when i read it right and i that that all that's all very um inspiring and interesting and i i I can see how that makes sense but i want to focus on that last part the sharing it with the public that Mm -hmm. when you talk about um you know how much it's uh personal and all these intense feelings and and stuff like that the the prospect of sharing that with so many people for me it's terrifying <laughs> how, how do you, how do you go about doing that uh huh oh i just do it <laughs> i just do it um and the reason why i i have a belief that you that no one can heal fully until you heal in community hmm. and that obviously doesn't mean that you have to be public um but but you have to understand poetry community was my community. Like when I was growing up in this art, when I, I, I started doing um, spoken word slam poetry when I was 17. So, and I was just discovering my hurt through my poetry at that point. I didn't realize how my, you know, past sexual experience had impacted me. I was just like 
uncovering this and had a tight knit group of people who were shout and get free poet in the audience and catching me after my set when I was like bawling my eyes out and processing. Um, so it's, it's been in me for so long. And I think the reason that we can't heal unless in community is because so many of our wounds are interpersonal. And so like, we can tell ourselves all we want, like, okay, you know, I'm healed and I'm safe and that's all great. Um, that's an important part of the process. But until we get that like neurobiological connection with another human being that's uh, that calms our nervous system and really imbues that, it doesn't it doesn't really count. Like it's not gonna stick. So it's just something that I've gotten into the habit of and also have just felt the huge benefits of. Well, that's that's great. It makes me feel like I have some work to do with my yeah. art and my uh, the sharing of that. Um, but yeah, and that that probably makes the the virtual shows and all the web stuff a lot more difficult because <laughs> that uh, community aspect is just. I wouldn't say it's exactly. gone, but it's totally different. Yeah, it is, and I found it through social media like I found it through my Instagram lives because when I was back in the states I was doing word Wednesday so every Wednesday I was doing a poem and I had kind of like the same people showing up and so it was fostering that energy and fo and fostering me being seen through my process which is an important piece of it too um, so I did feel like I had yeah I had that kind of connection but yeah, it's still, it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. The, the, the live content, um, virtually it, it's, it's not a replacement. It's, it's definitely different. And it's the kind of thing that I, I, I do hope sticks around after, uh, COVID isn't so much of an issue anymore because it's almost like a, a different form of connection with people because, you know, like we're talking right now on opposite sides of the planet um and we're able to have this conversation and you know for a uh, a lot of people that they found like newfound connections and all of that um mm -hmm. so there's some definite benefits to that yeah um but what what do you do um when the camera is off you know you're not doing a, a virtual open mic or an instagram live or anything like that how do you fulfill that connection need with people Oh, I'm a talker. <laughs> I'm an out loud processor. So I'm usually on the phone with my friend Leah, who lives in Spain, or my partner, um, or voice recording. <laughs> I'm a talker. We're talking to myself or writing, pretty much. <laughs> well, you got you, you got all your bases covered. Yeah, I'm sure that's a you know, it's just a great way to write more poems honestly I and mean, especially mm -hmm. if you're talking to yourself i mean that's kind of just the way that poems are written i would imagine it's just talking to yourself but in a, in a very <laughs> particular way <laughs> i've never really thought Maybe. of it that way Maybe. but you know. <laughs> yeah and that's the other thing right is these these poems you know if we want to call them i don't know like when does a thought turn into a poem you know but they they're like always germinating and they're always you know and then they sprout and they become this poem and now what they're doing because it's it doesn't stop there because there's really no one you know to like catch it at that stage there's no performance that i do regularly anymore and so now they're kind of turning into like blogs or essays where i'm like these themes that I've been writing on for the past 12 years of my career, I'm like, okay, now let me actually break down, you know, what, what sexism is and how it operates and what racism is and how it operates it and what gender is and, you know, and what it's not like now I'm getting the chance to like fully form my thoughts um, in a way that poetry can do, but I haven't use it for hmm. so that's kind of fun yeah um trying to find silver linings wherever we can basically yes we <laughs> must <laughs> um 
Well, I, I wanted to ask you real quick, you know, we, we do, we uh, interact with a lot of uh, youth performers and up and coming people. So just a quick question. What would you give as advice for up and coming poets or people who are just getting started? <sighs> That's so tough now because I used to say, get on stage as often as you can. <laughs> um, I mean, you, could, do, I, you I, could come to our open mic just saying, you know, a little yes. plug. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think for me, it was always about do it, do it, do it, do it some more. Mm -hmm. um, and even if, you know, even if you don't have a poem, even if you don't have a new poem or you you just have some scraps in your journals that you think might become a poem or whatever, like hit the mic as often as you can. Um, and even now, since there are fewer open mics from Sacred, um, Sacred Voices is one of the only ones that really stay consistently open. Um, now that there are fewer, you can start telling your friends and start telling your family members, start telling the people that you trust. And that can also foster, I don't know if anybody else has this problem, uh, <laughs> but I have, as you know, I have a fear of like being really vulnerably seen, um, which is probably why I do this work. And it's easier when it's public because it's like, it's not as intimate. But when I tell my partner, like, this is what I'm healing through and this is what I'm moving through, that's a different conversation because it's reciprocal. Now, you know, they can respond, they can support me, they can give insight. Um, and that is just, that's a deeper healing. So there actually is opportunity for deeper healing in our current situation. So, you know, like, call a friend a week and tell them, a poem or a journal entry that you have but basically just do it as often as possible because that gives you the confidence to walk into a room and and know that you got it and once that's once that happens everything's possible i think that's really good advice um so we're just wrapping up here but i do have one final question uh brie hill who i believe you know asked me to ask you to say the word indefinitely if you could indefinitely why i don't know <laughs> oh I was... maybe it's because that was <laughs> i think it's because um that's really funny i think it's because when i got to ireland and my flight got canceled i was just like i'm just gonna be here indefinitely that's just my new word, indefinitely. Indefinitely. Anybody ask me, how long are you going to be there? Indefinitely. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm doing it indefinitely. So that's my that's my word. That's hilarious. Breeze ridiculous. <laughs> I can say it in French, though. Maybe that'll make it a little interesting. Oh, let's hear it. Indefinitely. Oh. <laughs> Learn something new every day. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Um... If you tuned into this interview somewhere in the middle, I have been talking with Asetu Shango. Thank you very much for talking with me today. My pleasure. Uh, once again, my name is Aston. I am with Sacred Voices. Our next open mic, it is usually on the fourth Friday of every month. This month, however, the fourth Friday is the 25th. So we are bumping that up to today, the 11th, and that is going to be at 6.30 p.m., um, so if you are interested in performing or watching, find us on Facebook at Sacred Voices or uh, come to our website at sacred-voices.org. Once again, you, we have been listening to Asetu Shango. And uh, let me give you a chance to plug yourself. Uh, where can people find you? Yes, so you can find me on Instagram at Asetu Shango. Um, do I need to spell that or will they be able to should probably that spell that. Okay, so A-S-S-E-T-O-U-X-A-N-G-O. -S um, so you can find me on Instagram. You can also find me at asetushango.com. You can follow me on Facebook if you're into that sort of thing. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, th those are me. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and I will see all of you next time. Take care. And we're clear. <laughs> great <laughs> <laughs> all right well that was that was great i think that was a really good interview yeah, was i think that was a really good interview yeah,